Hello to you beautiful people and welcome to the Galactic Armory. Today's going to be a great day to be a Star Wars fan. That's because we're going to be covering the Lambent Seeker Arc Trooper from Battlefront 2. Now if you haven't seen it already, I did the Umbra Arc Trooper from Battlefront 2 as well a little while ago. This will be the second one in that kind of video series and we'll have one more to do after this. We're going to have a great time today. I'm going to show you guys how to go from a raw 3D printed helmet to something like this, a finished helmet that can be used as display or worn in cosplay. If you guys stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna be showing off some artwork that was submitted to me that I think is really cool. And I also have a very fun announcement that I wanna share with you guys. Now, if you heard 3D printed helmet and went, well, I don't have a 3D printer, that's okay. I do sell the raw 3D prints in my shop online. So if you wanna complete this project but don't have a 3D printer, that's where I would check if you wanna complete this project to yourself. Now we are gonna be starting off with showing off the files that we're gonna be using and preparing them for 3D printing. So if you don't have a 3D printer, check the timestamp in the description to just skip ahead to when we have the parts. So with that all said, let's get right into it. So the files we're gonna be using today come from my own website, galacticarmory.net. Here you're gonna find a lot of different 3D files, but uh, let me see if I can find the ARC Trooper ones. Uh, there they are. So here's the files we're going to be using. It comes as a single main body, but we'll be able to cut it up into smaller pieces if you guys have like a smaller print area. So let's jump into that right now because that's a very commonly asked question that I receive. So this is Mesh Mixer. It's a free program that is used to manipulate 3D models. Today we're going to be using it to cut the main body of the helmet into smaller, more manageable pieces. For that, the first thing we're going to need to do is make sure the helmet is level so that our cuts through the model are also level and square. So we're gonna use that through the edit and then transform modifier. And then we can uh, use the little wheel to make sure the helmet is as flat as possible. I'm looking at the brim of the helmet above the eyes as sort of a guide. So just make sure that's as flat as possible. Then we can go to edit and plane cut. And what this will do is it'll insert a like invisible plane through the helmet that once we select cut will basically chop the model into two different pieces. Be sure and change the cut type to keep both or else it will discard like one half of the helmet. And we're gonna line up our first cut right above the eyebrows because it's kind of an inconspicuous place and shouldn't be too hard to hide. Once we select cut, it looks like nothing really happened, but when we go to the edit separate shells modifier, it will separate out those two those pieces into two separate ones. So now we're gonna repeat the cut with the bottom object that we just created. Do a plain cut, keep both. And this one we're gonna put kind of behind the ear because it is also another inconspicuous place and shouldn't be too hard to hide. Uh, the seams between the pieces can be the most difficult to hide on a finished product. So you wanna be sure and put them in a spot that is pretty inconspicuous just to save ourselves some effort. So now when we separate shells again, you can see that we have three separate pieces that we can print individually. This makes it so you can print basically any helmet on any size print bed. You might need more cuts, you might need fewer. It's kind of up to you. Okay, now that we've got our three pieces ready to go, let's take them to the slicer program to prepare them for 3D printing. So here I brought the face into Simplify 3D, our slicing program. This is what's gonna convert our 3D object into G code, which the printer can actually read. So I'm gonna quickly go through my settings. Feel free to pause it at specific times if you guys want more detail. But some of the basic print settings that I use are 0.3 millimeter layer height, like five to 10% infill, three inner perimeter walls. My nozzle is at 210 degrees for PLA, and my heated bed is at 60 degrees. I typically add supports for anything over a 65 degree overhang, but I will add custom supports in some places that I think need it. So let's go ahead and slice this helmet and it comes out to around 45 hours total print time, which is pretty typical for a piece of this size. A full helmet could take you around 100 hours at least. Some of my print settings are for speed, since I found that increased detail doesn't really matter too much, and it doesn't benefit you as much as the extra time it costs. So we're just gonna repeat this for the top and the back pieces, and we'll get to printing. Now this helmet and all my helmets are printed with PLA from Xyltech. If you guys are looking for a filament supplier, I highly recommend them. I've been using them for probably almost two years now. They have some of the best prices on filament and are based in the United States, so shipping is pretty quick. 
And you guys can use code Galactic Armory for 15% off your order. So that value is even greater. So again, if you guys are looking for 3D printer filament, I highly recommend these guys go check them out. So when we have all the pieces printed off, we're gonna need to start assembling the helmet. So if you just wanted the raw 3D prints, this is where you'll begin. We're gonna start by putting the helmet together. And for that, we're gonna need a few things. We've got a flat surface with some sandpaper glued down to it. We've got some CA glue. We also have some E6000 glue. And I like to use an old soldering iron, but that is not really necessary. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is sand down the edges of the helmet. What this is gonna do is it's gonna make sure that the pieces fit together more smoothly, there's less of a gap in between the pieces. Since 3D printing is kind of an imperfect process, you don't have 100% smooth edges. So that's what this is going to help take care of. You'll know you've sanded it enough when you can start to feel a little bit of dust around the edge and it feels a little bit different. So be sure and take all of the edges of the helmet and sand them down pretty well. That dust that you feel on the edge of the helmet is also going to help our CA glue bond a lot faster. Our CA glue is gonna be our fast acting glue that's gonna hold the helmet in place while our slower acting E6000 is still curing. I use about a drop every half inch along the edges of our helmet with the CA glue. You don't need a lot, but this stuff will bond very quickly. So the challenge here is aligning the two pieces properly because if they're out of alignment in your glue sets, you're gonna be in trouble. So this part is very important to make sure that the pieces are aligned almost as perfectly as you can get them. That's why here I bring out the soldering iron. I just use it to kind of weld the inside seam of the helmet. Since the end is so hot and this is just plastic, it melts the plastic together and you kind of weld the pieces together. Now I use that to hold the pieces in place while I make sure that the helmet is aligned and that the CA glue is working. The CA glue takes about I don't know, 20 to 30 seconds before you have a hold that can support its own weight. So now we're gonna repeat that for the top part, just a drop of CA glue every half inch or so. And again, priority being to making sure that the pieces are aligned. Once the helmet is pretty secure, we're gonna take our E6000 to the inside seams where we just glued and just apply a pretty fat covering of glue over them. The E6000 takes about 24 hours to fully cure, but when it does, it is very strong stuff. So that's why we're using it in conjunction with another glue. Now that we've got the main body all assembled, we're gonna to need to start preparing it for painting. So for this next step, we're gonna need a product called Bondo. Now I like to get this Bondo in a small tube as a glazing and spot putty, but there's also like larger containers where you can mix it as a two part. But the small tube is pre-mixed, so that's why I prefer it. Now what this stuff is, it's a product for like repairing car scratches. It comes out with a toothpaste-like consistency, and when it reacts with air over the course of several hours, it will harden. After it's hardened, you'll be able to sand it smooth. Now what we're using it for is to fill in the very, very tiny 3D printer lines. Since if we tried to paint it now, it just wouldn't look good because it's not completely a smooth surface. What this Bondo is going to do is give us that smooth surface. So we're going to have to cover the entire helmet in this Bondo stuff. Fortunately, it is pretty cheap. You can cover an entire helmet with about a full tube of Bondo, which is only like $3. And you can find it in the automotive section of most large grocery stores. So we are going to give it a very healthy covering all around the helmet. Be sure and wear gloves for this since you don't want it to touch your skin and wear a respirator since it is pretty smelly. I'm also doing this in the garage with the door open since it will literally stink up the room. Now this stuff only needs about four to six hours before it's completely hard, but I like to just leave it overnight to let it fully cure. So once your Bondo is fully cured all around the helmet, we're going to start sanding. Now sanding is literally nobody's favorite part of the process. So we're gonna try and make it as minimally painful as possible. To start, we're gonna use something called a mouse sander. It's just, it's just an electric little handheld tool with a pad that vibrates a lot. And you attach a pad of sandpaper to that pad and it makes sanding a lot easier. So we're gonna be attaching kind of a medium, more coarse grit sandpaper of 120 and just sanding off like the large surface areas. You could just start sanding by hand immediately, but this is gonna just save us a lot of time and it's gonna save our shoulders a lot. So just go over the entire helmet. Be careful not to sand too much in one spot because if you go too deep and go past the Bondo and start actually sanding the physical helmet, it could overheat and start to warp since the plastic could melt from the friction. So just be mindful of that as you're sanding. So with me, I've also got a little leaf blower just to blow the excess dust off to help identify any spots that still need sanding. This spot isn't really about getting every 
nook and cranny of the helmet sanded, just the large pieces to save us some time. You also really want to make sure to wear a respirator or a dust mask for this, since we're going to be creating a lot of dust and you guys definitely don't want to be breathing it. So once we're done with this step, we're going to move on to the hand sanding to get the rest of the little details. There's not a lot to say about the hand sanding part. I just grabbed a little square off my 120 grit sandpaper pad and just went around the rest of the helmet sanding it off, being sure to sand any spots that we missed. Now you might have noticed the white parts on the mouth and the aerators that aren't covered in Bondo. That's just because we're going to be putting the aerators and a little mouthpiece over it. So there's no real point to putting Bondo on that spot and making sure that it's smooth since it's going to be covered up anyway. So once you finish the hand sanding part, we're going to be using a new material to really make our surface nice and smooth. Now Bondo is really great at filling in some of the larger print lines, but since we sanded with kind of a low grit sandpaper, we do now have a lot of little, very microscopic scratches all around the helmet. To fill those in, we're going to be using a product called Rust-Oleum Filler Primer. Now this is an aerosol, so it's going to do a great job at getting over the entire helmet, even in the little detailed areas that we couldn't really reach that well with the Bondo. Now this is like a thick spray paint, so it's going to leave kind of a shiny film over the helmet. But once it dries, it's going to fill in all the very microscopic little uh, scratches and some of the more detailed areas, and then we'll be able to sand it with a higher grit sandpaper, leaving us with a smoother finish. I generally like to spray it on the helmet until it has a nice shine. That will tell me that there's enough material on the helmet to actually do something, and we'll do that around the entire helmet. You're gonna to wanna to be sure to do this outside since it is an aerosol, and it will get everywhere. And you might do more than one coat, waiting about 20 minutes in between coats. I think I only did two coats total for this first round, but let it dry fully for a few hours. So we're back at it again with the hand sanding. I'm gonna take a 120 grit pad of sandpaper. It's an older one, so it's not quite as rough as the first time around, but we're gonna go around and sand the entire helmet again. I can't stress enough how critical it is to have a smooth surface for painting. If you paint over it when it's not perfect, you will see the 3D printer lines and it just takes away from the entire uh, finish of the helmet. We wanna make it look like it was casted or molded and we wanna hide those 3D printer lines as much as we can. So that means there's gonna be a lot of sanding. So once I've gone over the entire helmet, there are still a few places that need more Bondo and more sanding. For example, the seams along the pieces of the helmet, like the front and the back, uh, there's still kind of a visible line. So we need to put some more Bondo on that and smooth it out a little bit more. There's also a small gap between the top piece and the bottom two pieces. So we're gonna fill that in with Bondo as well. So despite our best efforts, there's still some pretty visible layer lines in some of the like thicker areas, like the top, the dome, and some of the other detail parts still need a little bit more Bondo. So we're gonna use this time to bondo those as well and just go around the entire helmet looking for any more places that need a little bit more work. We're also going to be using a q-tip to rub the bondo in some of the detailed areas around the mouth since my finger couldn't fit in there it got missed with the bondo so we're going to be adding that now. Now once all the bondo is dried we're going to sand it down again with our old raggedy 120 grit sandpaper pad and prepare it for the filler primer again. Okay you guys know the drill here one to two heavy coats waiting about 20 minutes in between each coat and then we'll be ready to do some more sanding. Okay, this will be the final round of sanding. So instead of a 120 grit sandpaper pad, we've got a 320 grit sandpaper sponge. Now, since it's higher grit, it's gonna leave us with a smoother surface once we're finished sanding, and that should leave us with a surface that is ready to be painted. Now, I only went through a couple cycles of the Bondo, the filler primer, the sanding, but really you guys can do that process as many times as you feel like you need to. If there's still more imperfections that are bugging you, it's perfectly fine to do more Bondo, do more filler primer, do more sanding until you're happy with the helmet. You're going to want to be happy with the helmet before we start painting since it's going to be more of a hassle to fix any imperfections with the base helmet after you've painted. So once we've got a good area sanded off, we're just going to take our microfiber cloth or leaf blower and blow off the excess dust. So make sure you're wearing a dust mask for this as well. And we want to inspect the seams between the parts and make sure that it's pretty well hidden and that there's no open gaps between the pieces. So once you're happy with the base model, you feel like it's smooth enough, it should feel really smooth due to the higher grit sandpaper, we'll be ready to start painting. So to begin the painting process, we're gonna be starting with the Rust-Oleum Ultimate Ultra Matte. There are some areas of the helmet that are white, but I just kinda wanna cover the entire thing in white, just to have a nice starting base for the paint scheme. Now just remember when painting, it is okay to take it slow. It'll probably take more than one coat. You definitely don't wanna rush it, to the point where you get runs or smears or anything like that. So take your time with it, be patient, wait about 20 minutes in between coats, 
and about a full day before handling it. So once we've got our full white coat, our next task is gonna to be to add the black paint. Now, to make sure that we get some nice clean lines between the colors, we're gonna be taping over it with some painter's tape. We're gonna be taping over all the areas that we want to remain white. Now this process is pretty laid back, but takes quite a while, so, so just load up some reference images and kind of just chill out at your computer while you're, while you're taping. So I didn't film the taping of it because it was really long, really simple, and kind of boring to look at. But here's what the finished tape job looks like for the black paint. I used two different types of tape, one thin for the details and one kind of thicker just for coverage. And I used an X-Acto knife to kind of cut away some of the smaller details. But with the tape all finished and ready, we can add our black paint. Now for the black, we're going to be using the Rust-Oleum Flat Black. This is the same black that I used on the Umbra Arc Trooper, so they should match pretty well. Again, just do light coats. It probably took two or three coats to make sure that I got all the areas covered in black, but if you take your time, you'll be fine. So after waiting about a day for the paint to dry, we get to do one of my favorite parts. We get to peel off the tape and reveal our design underneath. So for this, I only recommend one tool, and that's our X-Acto knife. Instead of trying to scratch off the tape with your fingernails, it might be best just to use the sharp end of the X-Acto knife to just lift the tape up just a little bit. If you scratch with your fingernail, you might accidentally chip away the paint which you obviously don't want. So I use the X-Acto knife for some of those detailed areas where the tape just wouldn't come up. So now that we've got the black added in, we need to add the lime color. So we need to do some more taping. This one was a bit more complicated because it's in between two different colors and it's just a thin line. But trust me, you don't wanna rush this step. You want both sides to be as symmetric as possible. I just did it by eyeballing it, but it took a lot of time until I was finally happy with the tape job. So here you go, here's what the second tape job looks like. It was a lot more complicated, took a lot more time, but it's gonna be worth it. So let's head back outside and do some more painting. So for the lime color, I went with the Krylon Jungle Green. Again, same as before, do light coats. I think this one took three coats actually, because the green is kind of a light color, so it doesn't show up as immediately as the black does. And you wanna be very careful not to get any stray paint particles on the back side of the helmet. I didn't tape the back side of the helmet because I knew I could control the paint a little bit, but if this is your first time around, you might want to tape the whole helmet just to be safe. So we're going to let this dry for about a day and then come back and peel off some more tape. So this time around, peeling off the tape is going to be a lot more satisfying because we actually have all the colors that we need and you can really tell that the helmet is starting to come together. So now that our paint job is complete, we're going to start weathering the helmet to make it look a little bit more realistic. So for the weathering, we're going to start off with the black wash. So for that, we've got a few things. We've got some gloves, because this is gonna be a little bit messy. We've got a cup filled with just a little bit of water, some black acrylic paint, and a nasty old brush just to apply it on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our black paint to the little bit of water. That's gonna dilute it a lot, make it less powerful, so we're not just painting the helmet black. But we're gonna mix that up in our cup, dip our brush in it, and then wipe it over the helmet. Now you can see the paint is pretty runny, and that's what we want. But we'll brush it on, and then shortly after, wipe it off with a paper towel. Now some of the paint is gonna be left behind and that paint is gonna give our helmet the impression of realism that it's you know, got some dirt on it, it's not brand new, which is just what I like to add to my helmets. Now when drying off the paint, be sure and do like random directions with the paper towel. This is gonna make it so that all of, you, all of your quote unquote dirt isn't smudged in the same direction because that just doesn't look realistic. You wanna be really random about it so that the dirt on the helmet is smeared all which way about. That's gonna give it a more realistic finish and make the weathering a bit more believable. I'm not gonna blackwash the entire helmet since most of the helmet is black already. It wouldn't really show up or anything. So we're just gonna wash over the white areas. Once that's done, we're gonna move on to our next weathering step. For that, I'm gonna grab just a small piece of really coarse sandpaper. In this case, it's 60 grit, so very rough stuff. And with that, we're gonna lightly sand the edges of the helmet. Just a few of the edges, not all of them. But what that's gonna do is give it the impression that it's been scuffed. Some of the paint has been scratched off in some of those hard edged areas. If you think about the helmet being dropped around or hit with stuff, it's most likely gonna get hit with stuff on the hard edges of the helmet. So it makes sense that those hard edges would have the paint stripped away more so than the smooth parts. You can definitely overdo it at this step, so don't scratch every single edge everywhere. Just light scratching here and there is all you really need. If we take a closer look, you can see the effect that the scratching has done to the helmet, and I really like how it turns out. So that's all the weathering we're gonna do. The next step is gonna be adding the visor so you can't see our eyes when we put this thing on. 
For the visor, the first thing we're gonna need to do is get a rough idea of the size of the visor that we need. For that, we're gonna grab just a small piece of paper and a Sharpie. We're gonna fit the piece of paper on the inside of the helmet and then just trace out the visor outline from the outside. Now the visor itself is gonna be made out of a grinding shield. You can find these on Amazon pretty easily. This one actually came with a slight green tint. So I just grabbed some black window tint and put it over the green and you can't even tell it's green anymore. But what we're gonna do is cut out that shape that we just traced out of the visor and we're gonna try and get it to fit as closely as possible. So once we have the rough shape cut out, I'm just kind of testing it out on the inside. If your cutout is larger than it has to be, it might like bump against some of the cheek details and so your visor would like sit off of it. So that's why we want it to fit as perfectly as possible. Once you're happy with the fit and you're positive that it covers everything, we're ready to move on. Now we need a way to hold the visor in place. For that, we're gonna be using this epoxy putty called Steel Stick. Now it comes in a tube of putty. It's got like two colors to it, an inner black circle and an outer gray circle. Now once you rub those two together and really mix them together, they will start chemically reacting and will very quickly turn very solid. It's similar to Bondo, but a lot stronger. So this is gonna do a great job at holding our visor in place. So to start, we just cut off a small section of the putty and begin making little Play-Doh snakes with them. Once the putty is one solid dark gray color, you know that you're ready to apply it. We're gonna cut it up into four small little pieces and apply it to four corners of the visor. Now we're gonna have to hold the visor in place for a few minutes while this stuff activates. It has got about a five minute working time. So I'm going to hold this visor in place for now and we'll be back after the putty is hardened. So now that the putty is hardened, let's take a peek at the inside of the helmet. You can kind of see the four corners of the visor that I went for, so I figured those were the most important parts to keep down. Now just to help with the putty, we're gonna be adding a little bit of E6000 along the edge of the visor, just to kind of help reinforce it. Because I have had it before where the putty actually pops off, so we wanna avoid that if possible. And that's it for the visor. So now we're gonna move on to the mouth details. Now with most of my helmets, I like to have the teeth cut out so that we're able to add a material behind them to make it look more realistic. For that, we're gonna be using a mosquito head net. That's gonna provide us the mesh detailing that the mouth has, and it's a pretty simple solution. So here I have most of a head net. I've already cut off a few other sections for a few other helmets, but luckily you'll be able to get two or three helmets worth out of a single head net. And they're only like a dollar, so this is cheap. But what we're gonna do is measure the length that we need for the whole mouth, and then cut about four times the height that we need. That way we'll be able to layer it over itself about four times, and that'll give us a good, like, solid mesh that you can't really see through that well. So we're gonna flip the helmet over and just apply some hot glue around the mouth and just push our mesh through the hot glue. Once the hot glue is cooled off, we're just gonna take some scissors and trim away the excess mesh that we don't need. And let's take a look at how it looks. You can see the mesh material really looks great in there if you ask me. And you can't really see through it unless like we line it up with the white wall behind it. So I'm really happy with this solution. We've got one final thing to attest to. We've got the extras, like the aerators, the mouth detail and the antenna. I haven't forgotten about those. I've been smoothing and sanding them the same as we did the helmet. Luckily, the rangefinder is like a light gray color, so it's basically the same color as our filler primer. And the aerators and mouth detail are the same color black as the rest of the helmet. We are almost done, guys. This is gonna be the final step. We're gonna be using E6000 to attach the rangefinder, the aerators, and the little mouth detail. Now, E6000 takes a long time to fully cure, so what we're gonna do is once the piece has been attached and glued, we're gonna add some tape over it to hold it in place while that glue cures. That'll keep it from moving or from sliding down, which I have had happen in the past, and E6000 takes about a full day to fully cure. So we're gonna let this sit while the glue cures. So if you guys have made it this far, I wanna congratulate you on making something very special. I hope you feel as satisfied as I do from making these helmets. And I hope maybe I was able to inspire you guys to take on a project like this yourself. Now I promised you guys some news, so I'm just gonna head and get to it. In late May of this year, I actually left my job as a software developer to pursue this passion full time. I am really nervous. Uh, been doing it for over a month now, just kind of getting a good rhythm but this has always just been a dream of mine since I started doing it like a couple years ago. I've been incredibly fortunate to gain a following like I have. I've seen you guys make tons of amazing looking helmets using the methods that I've described in my videos, and really the outpouring of support has been incredible. 
I'm very thankful and lucky to be in a position to take this kind of risk, but I want to let you guys know that I'm working tirelessly to provide you new files, new tutorials, new helmet paint schemes. It is a lot of work, but I'm enjoying it so far and I hope to be able to do this for a long time. With that said, it is not easy leaving a good full-time job to do something on your own. I had nightmares for probably the first two weeks after I left my job. So your guys' continued support helps a lot with that. Now while doing this full time, I need to explore other avenues of making this all possible. So I've decided to create my own Patreon account. For those of you that want to help me directly, either as a thank you for the tutorials that you've used or just as a way to express your support. I've also added a few different tiers that you actually get something back. So right now I'm just starting with three tiers. There is the recruit tier, which is just a way to say that you appreciate my work, you like the videos, you've used something that you've learned in my videos on your own helmets, and it's just a way to say thank you. Next is the grunt level, and you'll actually get a free helmet file download of your choosing every month. And finally, I have the captain level, where you get the monthly helmet download, as well as your own special coupon for 30% off all the digital files in my shop. Now all of these levels will also have behind the scenes shots exclusive to Patreon. So if you guys are interested in that, those will all be there as well. I tried to make a level for everybody, but please don't feel like you have to support me on Patreon if you're, if you're watching my videos. That's not what this is for at all. I just thought I'd have one open in case people want to support me in creating more content for you guys. Now I'd like to do a full video on kind of my thoughts on quitting my job and the reality of it but that's for a different time. So now I just wanna show you guys some artwork that I actually received through a message. I thought it was pretty cool. It's from a user called uh, Dangtrung812 on Instagram. It's of my uh, Coruscant Guard officer skin. It's a little clone chibi, and I think it looks really cute. So if you guys are interested in that kind of work, go check him out. So that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you're feeling confident enough to take on a project like this. I've got two arcs down, one to go, and it's probably the most complicated one, so we'll see how long it takes me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you guys again in the next one.